What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Thomas Lamb, CEO of Myriad Uranium. Always a pleasure to have you on, Thomas. How are you doing today? Good, thanks, Aaron. It's always good to see you. Yes, I'm excited to be talking about the company. So congratulations on closing $2.9 million of your current $5 million raise. Could you elaborate on the significance of this funding for Myriad Uranium and how you plan to allocate these resources? Absolutely. So the raise is $5 million at $0.25 cents a unit with a half warrant at $0.30. Cents. Uh, we're raising $5 million um, as a small company with a $10 million market cap. Uh, it's a big financing, but we have ambitious and important plans for the money. So we felt we had to go for it. And the plan is to do geophysics starting in a couple of weeks uh, at our Copper Mountain uranium project in uh, the center of Wyoming. And then uh, start drilling in September, probably late September we'll start. Uh, we have about 83 holes planned, could change uh, one way or the other if, by uh, a couple holes. And uh, that's gonna be roughly 56 RC holes, reverse circulation holes and the rest diamond uh, holes. So we need money uh, to fund it. And uh, you know we're gonna get a big leverage on that money so that's why we're, I'll, I'll, I'll get into the details of that, but that's why we're raising the 5 million. We have excellent investors that are coming in, um, some big names, uh, significant uh, uh, funds have come in, sophisticated investors. We, we closed the 2.9 as a first tranche uh, immediately because we wanted access to the money so we can pay for the geophysics and the lead costs related to the drilling. So we're, the fundraise continues, money is still, flowing in. And uh, that's a bit of the background behind the uh, the 5 million fundraise. So it's interesting times for for Myriad. Uh, uh, I look forward to elaborating. Yeah. Awesome. That makes sense to me. So you've mentioned that your investors include well-known uranium specialists and strategic funds. What does this level of investor confidence mean for Myriad Uranium and how does it influence your strategic planning? Well, things have changed now uh, in, in a really important way. Through an introduction, um, one of our, our board members, uh, Tom Lee, and his business partner, Jacob Dawson, uh, the, you know, they're finance guys from Toronto. Uh, they've been an excellent addition to our team. Um, they've introduced us to some really high power groups. Uh, I, I, tend, I tend not to name them uh, publicly or in the news releases, but people people know who they are and can find out. Um, these are... These are uh, significant, uh, uh, well-known investors who've done multi-billion dollar deals in the uranium space, who uh, they were introduced to the deal. They started to poke around. They had, for example, their due diligence expert, um, Doug Christofferson, who uh, is Denver-based, who, by the way, we've just added to our technical advisory board. And we just announced that yesterday. Um, they had Doug Christofferson get into our data and look around. And the deeper he dug and the more he thought about it, the more interested and uh, excited he and, by extension, his investor group uh, got. And so instead of us being a small, uh, yes, our market cap is small for the moment. Um, instead of being a, a, a junior with a small market cap, uh, poking around looking for uranium, we're now really leveling up. Uh, these are serious significant investors that have uh, helped companies go from uh, our size or smaller to uh, you know multi-billion dollar exits um, that those companies so this is this is really exciting news for myriad um, they've come in and wrote written big checks already and uh, committed to uh, uh, further support um, and uh, we have access to their networks uh, of investors, of uh, M and A uh, specialists, etc. Um, what they like is, among other things, I mean, there are two fundamental things about copper, the Copper Mountain Uranium Project. Number one, it's had a huge amount of exploration done on it. That was by Union Pacific Railway in the 1970s. I'll remind your viewers: 117 million Canadian in today's dollars, 2,000 drill holes. So it's, it's quite well understood. From a certain perspective, it's very well understood. And Union Pacific had a six-pit mine plan feasibility study all done at the in the late 1970s. But at that point, the uranium price dropped, and they just they stopped. Uh, they 
advancing the project. So our investors see that. Uh, they understand that the uranium is, is there. I have to insert the 43101 caveats as historical, but you know, Union Pacific identified a huge amount of uranium and they had a plan to mine it, do conventional mining. So that's point number one. Number two, what, what the dive into the data has revealed is that the exploration potential of our project area, the district, is vast, is huge. Big upside potential. Um, so for a 10 million market cap company, it's uh, pretty hard to resist for sophisticated investors once they do the dive uh, into what we've got. So that's that's a bit of the background on our investors, and I'm sure everybody will figure out who they are in, in due course, a bit of poking around. Yeah, it will all be revealed in due course too. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And it speaks for Myriad that you've got such high level investors interested in the company. You should be proud about that. So you just spoke about, you know, geophysics. You've outlined plans to conduct ground geophysics and drill approximately 82 holes, including 55 RC and the rest diamond. Can you walk us through the objectives and expected outcomes of this extensive drilling program? So Union Pacific Railway uh, again, drilled the 2,000 holes, identified six uranium deposits, planned a mine, um, had a six-pit mine plan. Um, it was all centered on one of the deposits called the Canning Deposit. Somebody can look at the map of our project area. They'll see the Canning Deposit. Within the Canning Deposit, there's a high-grade zone. Anaconda in the 1990s, when uranium price spiked just a little, I think it was 1996, suddenly got pretty interested in Copper Mountain, went and analyzed what they called an area of special interest. They also called it the high grade zone. And they they analyzed, I think it was 82 or 86 uh, historic drill holes that they analyzed in depth. We reported on that in a news release a few months ago. Um, what we've decided to do is go back to that exact spot. We have a lot of good information about these holes. They intercepted these drill holes intercepted really long intercepts, 291 feet of mineralization, for example. That's really long. Uh, grades up to 3,850 ppm, lots in the 2,000 and 1,000 ppm range in those zones. So it's, that's very high grade for, uh, and it's all near surface for uh, Wyoming uranium. Puts us in a really good position, very mineable. Um, and so we are going back to that exact spot because those are historic pounds and that those are historic intercepts. We're going to go right back and drill that area. And we're going to drill lots of holes in this high grade area. We're hoping for an inferred resource. So we're going to be able to publish, we'll, we'll have a 43 101 and a resource calculation or resource estimate uh, in the winter because that's how it's going to go. We're going to have to drill and then get our results and estimate a resource and, uh, at the very least, some inferred resource we hope is significant. And then, uh, you know, I don't want to get everybody's hopes up too much, but po potential for an indicated resource too, which is a higher category. And uh, this is in this area of special interest. That is our goal. So that's our focus. It's going to be a very nice foundation for the company. Uh, it's going to establish, if we're successful, uh, and we're optimistic, of course, that's why we're all doing this. Um, if we're successful, very nice foundation for the company be able to raise a lot of money uh, next spring and have a really good go at a, at a big ambitious exploration program next summer, um, get up to these tens of millions of pounds uh, is the hope. And then for every dollar we spend drilling, uh, the hope is we get a really nice big return on each dollar, a multiple of that in market cap and um, return to shareholders. Um, so that's the plan. That's what we're doing. Exciting times ahead. So let's talk about 43101. So one of your goals is to update historic uranium pounds to the current category under 43101 standards. Could you explain the importance of this goal and the steps involved in achieving it? So the 43101 43 National Instrument 43101, among, among many other things, uh, requires a uh, that you achieve certain standards to be able to report uh, mi mineralization as a resource in your deposit or in your project area. And basically you have to get some, a competent person, an expert to sign off on a, an, on the estimate. And nobody will sign off on it unless the data is there that's robust. And so you have to have uh, 
you know, if you have wide spaced holes, then uh, you can get someone to sign off on an, an inferred resource, which is highly uncertain because they don't know, don't really know what's in between those wide spaced holes, but you can make a guess um, and you end up with an inferred resource. It, now it tells the public and tells management, tells everybody that there's uh, good potential and that you've intersected good mineralization, et cetera. You get an inferred resource, it's nice. But uh, tighter spacing, closer holes will allow you to reduce that uncertainty of what's in the middle. And you can get higher categories of uh, assurance that the uranium in our case is there. And uh, uh, you get higher value because the risk is lower uh, for uh, these higher, cat you get higher value for the higher categories of mineralization. Uh, basically National Instrument 43101 is there to protect investors, protect the public uh, against companies making big claims like, well, what we could do for example, is say, Union Pacific said these millions and millions of pounds are there in the ground and up to 65 million pounds and beyond. This is what they said based on their 2000 drill holes. But Un National Instrument 43101 prevents us from saying, hey, we are sure we have those pounds. Uh, um, we're not allowed to say that. We have to caveat it, say that was done 40 years ago. Uh, we need to bring that current with current uh, work and current sign off with, by a licensed person um, uh, because, you know, what if it wasn't accurate 40 years ago? Mm -hmm. We're a little bit lucky uh, in that, you know, the top people, top experts available at the time in the 1970s worked on the project. 2000 holes is a lot of holes, et cetera. So we, we, we do feel like our historic estimates are pretty robust that we have. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, that's what 43101 is there for. You do work, uh, you get sign off from uh, estimates, or sorry, sorry, you get sign off on your estimates uh, from competent people that are have their licenses now that are valid now, and that gives the assurance to the uh, to the investors and the investing public. Um, it's a uh, it's a protective safety mechanism in place. It's a good good regulation. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks for explaining that. So let's talk about your recent site visits now. So during a yeah. recent site visit, you observed 750 ppm uranium. In the sand and gravel around the Arrowhead uranium mine, how do these findings impact your overall exploration strategy and project potential? Well, it, we have, first of all, we had a great site visit. Um, we we are thirty minutes off the highway, which itself the exit off the highway is 30, 40 minutes from the town of Riverton in Wyoming. So access is excellent. We have five G cell service from our site, so we did a nice tour. We looked at old drill holes. Uh, we saw the stamps and the tags on posts. Uh, so the historic hole locations that we have in our data, they match up. We just want to say match up very well with what we observed ourselves, checking the GPS coordinates of also that actually helps us give assurance that gives us assurance regarding the historic data we have that, uh, you know, we can feel comfortable with historic estimates, for example, that's, that's just one point. Um, second, we did go to the arrowhead mine. Uh, this was a uranium mine in the, it was located in the center of our project area, right in the center. It, it produced 500,000 pounds of uranium uh, in the 50s and 60s at a grade of 0.15%, 1,500 ppm. And according to Jim Davis, uh, who's on our advisory board, who worked there, he actually discovered the mine uh, in the 1950s. Um, he's, uh, he, he, according to him, they drilled out, this is what he said, they drilled out about a million pounds at the Arrowhead mine and they mined 500,000 pounds of it. Um, so there, there's a fair amount of remaining uh, material there. According to him, and you know, yeah, your viewers have to insert, again, these National Instrument 43101 cautions. This is historic information that needs to be verified. However, Arrowhead mine, an important uranium mine, mining at a high grade uh, in the center of our project area. And this mine was not part of uh, Union Pacific's six pit mine plan that we have. It is it is a bonus, it's on top of that six pit mine plan and the uh, resource estimate that I talked about, which is uh, where that we have in our materials up to beyond, so 15 to 30 million pounds for their mine planning. 
beyond 65 million pounds of potential, et cetera, historically. Arrowhead is separate from that. And so it's really interesting. We went and visited it. And in the gravels, 750 ppm, which is, I mean, that was double the mining mining grade in uh, Union Pacific's mine plan, six-bit mine plan. And that's just in the gravel between the boulders at the Arrowhead mine. So very interesting for us to observe that. There's tons of uranium there. That's the point. Um, Arrowhead is an example of several historic mines on our site. Um, you know, we get to investigate and gather those pounds into the uh, company's inventory of pounds. We have other prospects that Union Pacific thought had, for example, up to 10 million pounds over there, Midnight, which we've news released. We added that, recently we acquired that, uh, the Knob prospect and others. Uh, so that's a bit of the significance of us reading 750 ppm is uh, on surface, in the gravel, uh, in the sand, uh, places very alive with uh, uranium just right there walking around. All right, so let's talk about the advisory board addition. So you recently welcomed Doug Christopherson, a specialist to Myriad's advisory board. How will his expertise contribute to your projects, particularly regarding the exploration upside of copper mountain <laughs> projects? So first of all, Doug is an expert, a well, very highly regarded uh, uh, expert in the mineral space and uranium expert. He's advised uh, and done a lot of work for some significant uh, uranium companies over the years. Um, he is a mining, you know, engineer who's run mines over the years um, and at a high level. And he sees us, he sees our project Copper Mountain as a project that's going to be mined. And so he looks at that, looks at our project from that point of view, you know, looking almost over the horizon and way ahead. And what do we have to do to get there? And, and by doing that, we're going to create huge value uh, for the investor because we're not as, you know, there's lots of comps out there, these uh, juniors that are poking some holes and pumping up the fact they've intersected some uranium here and there. Uh, that's normal. Of course, that's part of the, the junior thing. But this, this sort of, Doug helps put, put us into a separate category of serious companies that are designing their approach, planning uh, with a view to turning this into an operating producing uranium mine that's going to generate a lot of revenue. So that's that's number one. Number two, uh, Doug is a conduit to uh, serious investors uh, that are, you know, funds, well-known um, strategic investors. Uh, he advises them. Uh, it's his deep dive into our data that uh, gave the assurance to these investors that we have a very high quality project. Um and so he's the conduit for that, very important. Uh, he's going to help us with our planning of our exploration. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, it's, it, it just gives us a big leg up. You know, he's going to be there every step of the way. And he's excited about the project. So we're very lucky. Yeah. Well, thank you for those updates, Thomas. It's been a pleasure having you on. And uh, lots to come for Myriad. I look forward to covering the story. And uh, we'll have to have you back on soon. Yes, we, I look forward to it. Thanks a lot.